Hello my beautiful friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Liv or Olivia if you are new here and today I have another fall bookish video to share with you. I'm sure it is no surprise that I am back with another fall bookish recommendation video. Like I said in my previous video, I have many type of book recommendations to share with you guys this year. I feel like even though we are not quite in September yet, you all just ate up my first video. And I am back now with some cozy mysteries. I did a holiday version of this last year where I did a haul, but I also shared with you kind of like my TBR slash recommendations. But they were all holiday or Christmassy type of cozy mysteries. But this time, you guessed it, we're going to be talking about fallish cozy mysteries. So in this video, I have about 10 to 12 on my physical TBR. A couple of them are going to be transitional fall books that I will share first, but some of them I also have not purchased yet. So I'm just going to mention those briefly at the end of this video and just pop up the covers and the titles. I'll have all of the book titles in my description. If you guys want to screenshot that or save that or I'm going too fast, I definitely want to still share some other books that I'm still intrigued by. I just have not been able to pick them up yet. Most if not all of these books I'm going to be recommending are the first in a series, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about hopping around. There is a couple that are number two in a series that I've never read before, and those are a little bit more fallish than the first ones, but I will be sharing the first titles with you just in case you're like, I am and you like to read them all in order, go ahead and grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of cocoa, iced tea. I mean, it's still 90 degrees out here. It's a little hot in the sweater, but I am willing to stick it out just to look like fall today for you guys. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So I want to start us off with the four books I'm going to recommend that are more transitional into fall or they're more just cozy in general that I personally am going to be reading this year. These are like top priority for me, especially going into the month of September where we're not quite having cold weather yet, but I just wanted to briefly mention these just in case you were interested. But the first one is Death at High Tide by Hannah Dennison. Every time I saw this cover, I was thinking it's definitely like a summer cozy mystery, right? It's set on the coast. It looks super summery, but my friend Desi actually started this before I did and she said it's actually quite spooky. So now I'm especially intrigued by this one. A cryptic letter in Old Island Hotel tell and a sister who just won't stop meddling. When Evie meets husband Robert suddenly drops dead of a heart attack, a mysterious note is found among his possessions. It indicates that Evie may own the rights to a crumbling art deco hotel, which is set on the coast. Evie has a sister named Margot who flies out with her to the coast at this hotel. There's a whole nother mystery involved that the people of this town actually have never met her husband. And so there's all of just these different different subplots I feel like of this mystery. I think this one is going to be absolutely incredible. Love a good sister dynamic and I'm definitely going to be adding this to my September TBR. The next book that's high on my radar is On What Grounds by Cleo Coyle. I feel like this series has been around for quite a while but of course a cozy coffee shop is going to be the perfect vibe going into fall. Claire Cozy gotta love the last name Cozy, used to manage the historic Village Blend Coffee House until she opted for quieter pastures and a more suburban life. But after 10 years and a little friendly cajoling from the owner, she's back to the grind serving coffee and solving crime one cup at a time. So in this one, it looks like the assistant manager is unconscious in the back of the store. There's coffee grounds everywhere. And then after they pass away, there are things that are curiously being moved out of place. Obviously, the main thing here is a cozy coffee shop, so I'm all for that. The next book that looks perfect for fall, just the cover screams fall. You have the fall kind of foliage here. That is A Dark and Stormy Murder by Julia Buckley. Our main character, Lena, is an author or a writer herself, and she gets invited to become the assistant of one of her favorite authors. But when she shows up at 
this author's place, there is like a dead body, I think, out on the lawn. And so it sounds kind of crazy. It sounds like it definitely starts off with a bang. And it even says on the back, it has plenty of action, a dash of romance, and lots of heart. And that is one of my favorite things about Cozy Mysteries, is it gives you that overwhelming sense of like a warm, fuzzy feeling. It's just so heartwarming and heartfelt. And I think this one's gonna be absolutely incredible. This next one is a little bit more spooky. It's called A Haunted Home Renovation Mystery, and the title is If Walls Could Talk, and I love this cover. I love the colors. It also just kind of screams autumn to me in general. Since she took over her father's construction business, Melanie Turner has made quite a name for herself, remodeling historic houses in the San Francisco Bay Area, but now her reputation may be on the line. At her newest renovation project, a rundown Pacific Heights mansion, Mel is visited by the ghost of a colleague who recently met a bad end with power tools. Mel hopes that by tracking down the killer she can rid herself of the ghostly presence of the murdered man. Mel's only clue is an odd box she discovers inside a wall at the job site. If she can make sense of its mysterious contents she might be able to nail a killer before she becomes the next construction casualty. This one just sounds very different from any other cozies I've read. I mean our main character is talking with a ghost and I just love that. I love the puns in the synopsis. This one is just going to be such a great time. Now we are full on diving into spooky or fallish books. I also have some witchy books I want to share and then also of course at the end I'm going to be sharing books that I have not yet purchased. But the next book is The Ghost and Mrs. McClure. Young widow Penelope and her old aunt Sadie are making ends meet by managing a mystery bookshop. Pen may not believe in ghosts but she does believe in good publicity like nabbing Timothy Brennan for a book signing. Soon after the best-selling thriller writer reveals a secret about the store's link to a 1940s murder, he keels over dead and right in the middle of the store's new community event space. This is definitely an older one. I mean, I got this as a used copy. It came out in 2004, but I kind of love the retro and the colorful vibes on the front of this cover, so it's kind of a cover buy, but I know this series I think is pretty long, and I think they may have even rebranded this cover at this point, but obviously I got this one super cheap. It sounds super fun. I love a good haunted bookstore vibe. The next series I want to recommend is The Mountain Lodge Mysteries. We have Get Away With Murder and we also have A Trip With Trouble. This is the first one. This is the second one. I've owned this first one for quite a while now and it takes place in the Blue Ridge Mountains. There are yoga instructors and that's literally all I remember about this. I don't even know what the mystery is technically about. As far as I'm concerned, there's just a killer on the loose at this secluded lodge and I live really close to the Blue Ridge Mountains so I think this is going to be the perfect vibe for me to be able to picture the atmosphere of what's going on and this one is obviously so autumnal like I have to read it so I think I'm gonna read the first one in September the second one in October or maybe November and I think this is just gonna be such a vibe. This next book I am so excited for probably the most excited about all of these books it came out I think this year. You guys, this cover, are you kidding me? I cannot get over how cute this is, but not just the cover. I'm going to read some of the back to you because it sounds kind of terrifying. It's Halloween weekend and Beacon Harbor, Michigan has a packed schedule of events, including the pumpkin pageant featuring humans and their canine counterparts. For treats, there's plenty of pumpkin goodness from bakery cafe owner and local lighthouse resident Lindsay Bakewell, but someone wants to spoil the fun with a deadly trick. So this lighthouse, that Lindsay owns apparently is haunted and she has someone that wants to come in and do a podcast type of like investigation episode or something. They see coming out of the lighthouse one night that there's like this dummy or this funny costume that one of the locals is known to wear. Come to find out it's actually a corpse. It is not just a dummy. <laughs> Everything goes haywire from there. I love that we get like this investigation kind of podcast element to this. I think that's just gonna make it 
even more creepy. I seriously just cannot get over this cover and this is gonna be one of my top priority reads going into October. Next I have one that has very similar vibes but I believe this one came out before the one I just mentioned but it is called The Ghost and Mrs. Muir by Krista Davis. Holly Miller doesn't believe in spirits but the sugar maple inn is filled with guests who do. Already I mean that's giving me Gilmore Girls vibes. You have kind of like this gazebo in the background. Oh, this is just gonna be perfect. The TV series in development, Apparition Apprehenders, has descended on Wagtail's annual Halloween festivities to investigate supernatural local legends, and Holly has her hands full showing the ghost hunters a scary fun time. But the frights turn real when Holly's Jack Russell Trixie and Kitten Twinkle Toes finds a young woman drowned in the Wagtail Springs Hotel's gazebo, the spot of the town's most infamous haunting. This next book I was super excited to read last year. I don't know what happened. You guys know how crazy fall can get with content and creating and everything, but this is probably the one that I'm the most disappointed in myself I didn't get to. That is Death Overdue by Allison Brooke. This one is a haunted library mystery. I mean, can you get any more perfect? Carrie Singleton is just about done with Clover Ridge, Connecticut, until she's offered a job as the head of programs and events at the spooky local library. Her first major event is a program presented by a retired homicide detective who claims he knows who murdered Laura Foster, a library aide who was bludgeoned to death 15 years earlier. As he invites the audience to share stories about Laura, he suddenly keels over and dies. The medical examiner says he was poisoned, and I am just so excited for this. It sounds incredible. There's also ghosts and cats in this library, and it literally just couldn't get any better. I'm not sure where this one falls within this series, but regardless, I'm gonna read it because it sounds perfect. Look at this little cat and the pumpkin thing. I just, ugh, you guys. Fall cozies are where it's at. The next four books I want to talk about are for my witchy people that love the witchy vibes just like me. The first series, which is one I can highly recommend, is In the Company of Witches by Aurelie Wallace. And then we also have When the Crows Away. I read this first one last year. This is the first ever cozy mystery I've ever read in my entire life. I loved it. I sobbed. It was incredible. I laughed. I cried. I did all the things with this book. And this is the second in this installment, which I will 100% be picking up ASAP, but if you love practical magic and you love a cozy bed and breakfast vibe, this is going to be the one for you. In this first book, we have our main character, Bryn, who lives with her aunts, who are just hilarious. I love their humor. I was cracking up like the whole time. They unfortunately find a dead body at their b and and so of course Bryn is going to try to cover up their name and solve the mystery, but one thing about her is she is actually a witch that can talk to ghosts or can talk to the dead, but she refuses to accept her talent or her gift because her husband passed away and so she's just struggling with a lot of grief and not really wanting to be a witch anymore. If you have lost a loved one yourself, I feel like this is definitely gonna hit home. There were so many parts of this that actually reminded me of my grandma and I think that's also why it holds a special place in my heart. If you guys have not checked out this series, please do. The next book I have here is A Potion to Die for by Heather Blake. This one is definitely more a little bit romantic. Our main character owns this potion shop and she is just determined to match make everyone she can. But when Carly, our main character, finds a dead man within her shop, of course she's getting a bad name for herself and she kind of has to figure out what in the world is going on because now of course no one wants to buy potions. I think that just sounds like such a good time. This one is called The Wishcraft Mysteries. If you are interested at all in this series. I believe this is the first one. This next one is called Bait and Witch by Angela M. Sanders. I've seen quite a few of my friends read and love this one, but I still have yet to read it myself. Josie loved working among the Library of Congress's leather-scented stacks until she uncovered corruption and made herself a target. As Wilfred, Oregon's new librarian, Josie can stay undercover until the case goes to court, but life in this little town isn't as subdued as she expected. The library, housed in a Victorian mansion, 
mansion is slated to be bulldozed. Still digesting the news that her safe haven is about to become scrap lumber, Josie discovers a body in the woods. This just sounds like such a vibe. I mean, you have like a Victorian mansion, kind of sounds a little bit gothic, and she dresses up undercover. It just sounds super cute. Next, I have Curse the Day by Annabelle Chase. This is the first in a spellbound paranormal cozy mystery series. This is one of the biggest cozy mystery series I think that I have ever seen. The only magic Emma Hart believes in is caffeine and the power of the dryer to lose one sock per load. A public interest lawyer buried under a amount of student debt, Emma's whole life has been one turn of bad luck after another. Her streak seems to continue when she gets lost on the way to see a client. A chance encounter with a suicidal angel lands her in Spellbound, a town where supernaturals have been cursed to remain for centuries. Probably not the best time for Emma to discover that she's actually a witch. This just sounds like one of the more quirky kind of cozy mysteries. I mean, I love a good fantasy element. Okay, the next nine books that I'm going to talk about are all series that are on my radar. I'm probably going to purchase some of these. I may even place an order right after finishing this video, but I've had my eye on them for quite some time now. They've been on my list and I would love to get to some of these. The first one is The Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Lori Gilmore. I mean, you may as well just call her Lorelei because this book gives me major Gilmore Girls vibes. We have our main character, Jeannie, who's taking over this cafe and there's like this grumpy guy Logan who brings her produce which sounds almost like a Suki kind of Jackson situation but there are strange things that are happening there's misplaced items and things just start going haywire and I guess they had to figure all that out but this one for sure I mean even the cover just kind of gave me Gilmore Girls vibes this next one is number three in the series but I adore the title it caught my attention right away it's called Death by Pumpkin Spice it's part of the bookstore cafe mystery. This one looks like it actually takes place on Halloween. There's a failed marriage proposal where there's a bunch of jack-o'-lanterns in a room and then there's a woman that is found in this room surrounded by jack-o'-lanterns who was strangled to death. So of course from there the mystery takes off. This one does sound like it has a little bit more romance to it or it's a little bit more relationship based or character development based I guess but the vibes look impeccable obviously. Next we have have a Poppy McAllister mystery. This is number eight, but it's very Halloween. It is Mischief Nights Are Murder. Poppy owns this B&B where she also has a bakery and it's known for being haunted and they actually host haunted like dinner tours. And so one night I think there's a bunch of interesting quirky characters that come along for one of these tours and I think one of them ends up dead. And I just love when cozy mysteries have a great cast of characters. Characters. I also have Steeped in Suspicion, which is number one in the Pebble Cove Tea House series. This one takes place in a sleepy coastal town. There's ghosts everywhere. Rosemary, our main character, can actually see ghosts. And I feel like that reminds me so much of In the Company of Witches. So I think that's going to be the part of this book that I love the most. But of course, there's tea. I mean, it's a tea house and that's perfect for me because I love tea. Next, I have the Perfectly Proper Paranormal Museum, which I cannot get over this cover. It is way too good. This one is the first in a series. There's a local paranormal museum where a body is found dead. There's supposedly a ghost on the loose. We have a bunch of ghost hunters, taxidermists, a motorcyclist that's threatening this museum. It just sounds, again, like another quirky fun time, but also really spooky. This next book I did read the first one too. I think it was the first one. It's called Apple Cider Slaying by Julie Ann Lindsay, but the second one in the Cider Shop mystery series is called Pulp Friction, and obviously it takes place at an apple orchard, and it's just gonna be perfect to transition into fall. I'm not exactly sure what happens in this one, but in the first one we had a grandmother and a granddaughter dynamic, and the grandmother was freaking hilarious. I adored that book with my 
my whole heart, but there's also quite a few moments that were pretty action-packed that my heart was actually racing. So I think this is definitely going to be a series that I continue this fall. The next series that I have been dying to start is Mrs. Morse and the Ghost. It's a Salem B&B mystery. Obviously, it takes place in Salem, Massachusetts, so it's perfect. Our main character, Charlene, ends up buying, I think, like this really historic mansion, and it's known for people coming and taking like haunted tours during Halloween because it's supposedly haunted. Honestly, that's all I need to know. If it's gothic and there's a mystery and it's spooky, I'm totally there. Next, I have Spell Booked, which is a retired witch's mystery. Hello, that sounds perfect right up my alley. Before these three witches retire, they have to give up their magic and train these three new women to be the new witches. But other than that, I don't know anything about it. I don't know what the mystery includes, but it just sounds like a good time to me. Last but not least, we have Caught Dead Handed, a witch city mystery. Yes, you can tell there's definitely a theme here of what I prefer. This one also takes place in Salem, Massachusetts, but our main character plays a psychic on TV. But then I think she's somehow known for being a psychic in this town and some weird stuff happens. It didn't explain a lot in the synopsis of what the murder actually is, but I love the name. I love the synopsis. It just sounds like a fun time. Well, friends, that is all I have for you for this video, but I hope you enjoyed me rambling all about different cozy mysteries I'm excited to read. I feel like cozy definitely fits the theme of my channel and the theme of my lifestyle, and I'm definitely going to be reading a ton of these going into the fall. I'm so excited to read some of these with you all, but thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for watching another fall video. As you can tell, I'm so excited for fall to be here. I just cannot wait for all the fall content I have planned. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much much and I will see you in my next video.